no reason to hurry I don't know where you're running to I know you don't need to worry The world is turning to come to you All right. Mm. Will be saved. Save the stream, Doctor Saab. I will watch it tomorrow. Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, Aditya Nitwani, Andy, Tejvis, welcome. I hope that I'm audible. I hope that I'm visible. I hope that the background looks good. How are you all doing? Uh, Romil Panthi, hello, Doc, watching from Nepal. Okay, Romil, welcome. How are you guys? Okay, people on Discord, how are you? How many people have joined on Discord? Hello. All right. Hi. I'm good here. Yeah. How are you guys? Great. Okay. Uh, so, people on YouTube, can you please confirm if I'm audi audible, visible, everything is okay? Everything looks good. I'm an artist. This seems beautiful. Krishna Kulkarni, thank you. The background is OP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. I, I, yeah, I thought so too. I thought so wow. too. I spent, uh, I spent around 20 minutes just setting this uh, filter up and uh, I think it looks okay. This is the first time I'm using my, uh, you know, my green screen to full effect. So, nice. yes. Very good. I it can remember good. the stream where you started with the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's it's come a we've come a long way, guys. It's uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, people on uh, YouTube, if you if you guys want to join in in the audio conversation, please join Discord. Uh, the link is in the description. Uh, you have to join Chill Zone. Yeah, Wasim, you saying you are looking too bright? Wasim, I'm gonna take that as a compliment because I can't be bothered to change the settings again. I'm sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> All right. How are you all doing? We have, I, I realized that we haven't streamed in a while and um, yeah. Okay. Decrease the brightness. Wait, decrease brightness of what? Mm. The colors are a little bit unsaturated and it's a little bit bright. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I'll just reduce the brightness a little bit. Okay. Is that better? Mm. Wait, just wait for, wait for maybe 10 seconds or something and then you'll see. Mm -hmm. Abhi hai yaar. I mean, if bright hair to hai, brightness on your face, okay. Okay, reduce the light, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Aman Chaudhary is saying perfect. Aman, thank you. I'm going to take your word for it because, uh, yeah, I like people who are optimistic, you know, I like people who are more positive. So, thanks for that. Uh, all right. So, guys, uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of things actually uh, we're going to talk about art and uh, we're going to talk about wait what you're looking like a more black than before okay no I don't know uh, I'm just gonna power ahead with it you're looking extremely positive yourself high brightness because of the light being reflected off of your forehead so guys there is nothing much I can do about that right now um, abhi forehead hai to hai I can reduce this light one second. And I don't know if that helps, but uh, yeah, we want Shoto. Oh yeah, so we're definitely going to uh, be... Mm, okay, uh, can uh, people on Discord uh, mute yourself if you're not talking? Thanks. So we're definitely going to do uh, more streams with Shoto. We are going to talk about art and we are going to uh, talk about uh, philosophy again. So, oh, Amrita Arul Raj is here. How nice. Amrita, if uh, you are up for it, you're welcome to join the stream. We are going to talk about art and we are going to talk about, uh, you know, just basic stuff. We're just catching up. 
but anyway nice to nice to see you here uh to one with dark said all right so uh what i wanted to talk about today was how many of you have dabbled in art how many of you have experimented with art or even better how many of you consider yourself as artists out and out if somebody says what do you do and uh, you say i'm an artist kitne log hai aise discord guys koi hai sir yeah yeah uh, and yes. and did you do that yeah oh, i mean wow. as an artist and photographer so i have always been very amazed by that because uh, for me as a doctor for the longest time i have i have often thought of art as uh something that you do in your you know free hobby. time as a hobby, hobby. ki yeah. part time artist as somebody just said utsav mm-hmm. just said part time artist and uh, not even that even part time artist is like an exaggeration abhi tak uh, i would always think that something that you do in your free time kuch aur kuch nahi mila theek hai kar liya uh mm-hmm. and i i realize that oh pick up artist nahi bhai that's something very different uh recently i have realized that art is a part of almost everything we do and uh, they say that medicine is also an art and architecture is an art uh, you know being a good lawyer is an art is an art form so after a while you realize that okay sab mein art form hai so now i'm trying to rethink what is art in general so that is what this conversation is going to be about today's conversation and i wanted to sort of find out how everybody integrates art into their work so hit me with it tell me what you do and tell me if you think that do you use art in it you know who is saying everyone is an artist most of them are boring most of them are boring to the other most okay picking the wrong boys is also an art amrita arulraj is on fire guys amrita is on in the chat and uh, amrita there have been requests of uh, to discuss your uh, relationship issues not not mine i'm just uh, saying uh, chat was saying this <laughs> making notes is an art yes absolutely i to i completely agree that making notes is an art i'm going to just start uh, my Ed. yeah tell um, me so uh, uh, today i just came back to the campus mm-hmm. and uh, i shifted to a new room okay so from the previous one and uh, so we had choices to make uh, while choosing rooms so one of the most important factors that made me uh, just select the room was uh, one of the paintings that uh, some uh, person who used to live in the same room before had painted yeah it was so aesthetically beautiful that i was like this is the and and it had a wonderful uh, view of the room Yeah. from the room yeah so uh, for me it was like a deciding factor to make the choice so deciding deciding what art to keep is that what you mean being a bo- so in other rooms uh, there was no art form inside and the view was not that great right right so i okay so in when i was in km I had uh, moved into this hostel room, which was on the fourteenth uh, or fifteenth floor of the new hostel building, and I remember the first time I moved in there, and I was I had a table right next to the window, and I could see the whole of uh, you know South Bombay from my window, and I had this small painting in front of me, and I realized how much of a difference it makes to have that kind of environment in which. you feel immersed in your surroundings and in art form even when you're studying even when you're doing something mundane like just reading reading a textbook just being surrounded by that just changes everything okay mm. exactly and that's where you know the concept of home decor comes right absolutely so the idea of uh, interior design is uh, yeah. something that always amazes me because uh, everybody's viewpoint on how their house should look like is so different and that I, i don't know if there are interior designers in the chat uh, if there are any then let me know but uh, how do you guys 
you know find that sync between what what is in your mind and what the client wants because then it's a, it is so subjective it, what what i a lot of times we don't even realize what is it that we want in our rooms so i've, I've often been quite amazed at how somebody can uh, you know sync and try and understand what somebody else wants the uh one of the things that I wanted to do today was to showcase the Discord art section that was there uh, that have been that has been going on for a while, and uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it, uh, but I would recommend everyone to go check this out on my Discord server. There is a channel called as Art Section, uh, Artist Corner, and uh, the whole all the entries in that art section has been so great uh, i'm just going to share the screen hold on because mm, i just wanted to show you guys display number one all right okay mm. Can you guys see it? Hold on. Uh, YouTube chat, are you able to see this uh, screen? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So. I'm just gonna show the, like some of the artwork that has been, that has been put on this, in this room has just been incredible. I've I've been following this page and we actually did a competition uh, a few weeks ago and uh, okay one second hold on yeah every Every section, every uh, entry in this room has been sort of mind blowing to me. Uh, Kushi, this is amazing work. I am going to show you the, I'm going to show you the uh, winners and the like the finalists of the competition. We actually had a competition for uh, artists and uh, move it to the left. Okay, one second. <laughs> School kills artists. There is this. Uh, there is. There are drawings which uh, just talk about very abstract stuff. Uh, I'm going to show you the winners of uh, the competition, the finalists, that last uh, eight people who were selected. And I think a lot of this is by Andy. So a huge shout out to what Andy has been doing in this uh, section. And I wanted to encourage everybody who is listening to come here, put up your artwork. Uh, see what you can uh, you know whatever you have done and uh, it it helps people it encourages others it uh, there is a lot of feedback and even for me I just uh, I think I'll just like to come here and just watch this stuff <clears throat> now I just shared an artwork I created a few weeks back uh, when did you share it on the channel just now okay I shared on Insta and tagged you but you ignored so I'm going oh, to take this back. Hang on. Is this uh, with a feeling that is irrational, there is a constant battle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Did you just make a, a lightning between PFC and Limbic? Yes, battle. <laughs> How lovely. Okay, and I'm sorry, guys. This is... Oh, my God. For God's sake. You know who has done or No one can do for God's sake, man. All right. So I think this is an, what was it? I forgot what this was. I think this was part of that scribble tournament where, uh, okay, never mind. That's not what today's show is about, guys. I'm glad nobody had a screenshot of the tiger. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah. So I want to, I wanted to encourage everybody to come on, come on this uh, server. Put in, share your work, whatever it is, 
and uh, let us know what you what you've been up to and I wanted to show you the finalists of the art competition and I wanted to give a shout out to Izali because they were nice enough to put up this uh, whole competition together and uh, they were they are sponsoring the prizes and uh, I want you all to check out uh, izali.com it's in the description and there is a coupon code as well all right so this is the one of the uh, first uh, artwork that got selected and I have to say right at the onset that I absolutely love each one of the art forms that had been uh, submitted for the competition it is incredible what you guys have been doing and I have the utmost respect for every one of you and there has been a, there have been voting for almost 15 days I think and these are the finalists so this is the first one I don't know the names of the creators uh, so I'm just going to talk about the artwork themselves and uh, I want you all in the chat to tell me what you think about it and just you know express your love just express the love for the creators whoever has done this and I think this is amazing I think this is a digital it has been digital paint and uh, uh, yeah pencil colors so all all uh, all of them were allowed in the competition so this is the first one and this one has been mind-blowing to me again I don't know who did this but uh, when I first saw this it was uh, absolutely incredible that somebody has uh, created this and somebody in the discord server uh, could actually make this and utmost respect this one just looked so meta to me the idea of so of course every art piece is subjective we look at an art piece and it's almost like a mirror you see it and you break it down and you put things together in a way that makes sense to you so when you see an art piece you're almost seeing yourself so everybody will interpret this differently but for me the idea of a girl you know there is blood on her fingers blood on her hands and somebody's holding her there is a lot of dark connotations to this and I don't know what this artist was thinking when he or she made this but uh, I I just I'm amazed at the amount of information that you can convey in an art form like this and the amount of emotion that an art form can convey because this is an entire novel I when the more I look at this picture the more I feel like you have just read through an entire novel or you've just heard a huge story so kudos to the artist this one is a pencil sketch and look at this look at the sh look at the shading in this one I have I remember when I was a kid uh, I used to buy these Navneet sketch sketchbooks and they had portrait books that you can draw and uh, they used to give um, uh, pictures of uh, Amitabh Bachchan and just different different faces that you can draw out and I remember practicing those this looks like one of those original ones this looks like one of the uh, drawings on the left that you use to copy on the right mind-blowing guys uh, who did this unbelievable I think that this was amazing uh, this again is like a very meta one and I'm going to just think about uh, or share just what comes to my mind and there's going to be a very freewheeling chat okay so this uh, a whole uh, discussion is going to become for members only later but uh, I'm just going to talk about whatever comes to my mind and again this is a very meta picture for me when I look at this it's like somebody crossing between multiple uh, parallel universes so you could see that there are different stars planets and a hand is holding on to each other and you're stepping from one parallel universe to the next and uh, one of them is just empty and blank and the other one has all sorts of geometric structures so for me it's almost like you're stepping from uh, emptiness into chaos or from nothingness into life you could think about it in different ways mm, but again the thought 
process behind this the more you look at it the more you can think so it's almost like poetry you can just go on creating more and more information from the same piece of art and this is what all art does i feel like um, art is sort of like those uh, folded pieces of paper that you can just keep on unraveling you can keep on opening uh, more and more and more until you have this whole house or a whole mansion in front of you that is what this art piece does to me again look at the pencil sketch we have all lived through uh, mr bean and it doesn't even take a second to register i i've absolutely adore this uh, so the artist has signed her name parisha very very well done uh, amazing work i also realized that this is extremely tough to judge and not something that uh, you know you you do it lightly not something that you can do it off handedly i was just staring at these pictures for so long and uh, yeah every one of this so even this one uh, ramanpreet kaur mind blowing work i i think this is a watercolor painting and this is so so good it's the orange slices the peels every aspect of this has been done so well because what i something i really liked is the way that light is reflecting off of this orange so you can tell that the orange is wet and there is light reflecting off of it amazing work and uh, so this is by shrishti and so this is uh, titled as freedom and to express myself from myself now this is sort of like a combination of art and poetry because you have put words and you have combined it with an art form we have combined it with a uh, paint and really really nice i feel like the what you have written goes so well with what you have uh, painted and for a second i thought this was a photograph when i first turned the page i thought this was a photograph but uh, again i think the artist has signed it is that jason khan or fazan khan mind blowing work man too good I love the way that you have made the reflection in the water that is what really blew my mind just the way that the whole mountain range is reflected in the water and the way that the the shading the the shading of this mountain is so different from the shading of this one incredible stuff incredible stuff says on and I think this is the final one this is I had trouble wrapping my head around what this is this Uh, a uh, realistic paint realist painting or is it like a modern art painting because it's it suddenly looked like a cat <laughs> like a frozen cat sort of melting into it and again there is so many metaphorical uh metaphorical connotations to this but amazingly done very very nicely done and uh, one thing that blew my mind again in this one is how little sketching there is in this most of the paper is blank most of the paper is white but you feel like you're looking at an entire painting and to me that has been very impressive so chat i'm going to give you a chance uh, to go through what i went through and try and pick one i, I find it impossible because each one of these uh, artworks has been mind blowing and uh, how do you pick one right i have to tell you all that it has been extremely difficult uh the the one uh, or the couple of paintings that really really stood out to me was uh, one was this uh, the pencil sketch one and uh, the uh, the the one with the multiple stories and uh, the one with the uh, the apples and i have to tell you that it is constantly circling my mind you cannot compare i have not uh, i have not entered my tiger in this competition uh, saurav manjrekar thank you for asking uh, i would have but then it would be unfair because obviously i would win as you all as you've all seen my tiger drawing it's unbeatable right so uh, i didn't enter that i wanted to give everyone a chance so that's why you guys are welcome uh, everyone but uh, i have decided to go with the one with the apples 
because of just the way it just sprang out at me right that's the only reason the first when i just swiped on to this one everything about it just sprang out at me that oh wow this how can this be a how can this be a painting but uh, so that is that is what is going to be uh, my pick for the prize for this one and doctor is picking apples i thought that was also funny in a way that i i need to subvert that whole story of uh, an apple a day but i have to tell every one of you that this has been incredible i am so honored that you guys have been putting up artwork of this caliber on my server and i look forward to seeing more of your work please keep putting up more work uh, on the server i promise that i will check out everything and uh, thank you a big big thank you to all of you who have participated and for making this competition a success i enjoyed it thoroughly and i hope that you did too now the uh, winner of the competition will get a prize from izali and uh, izali.com uh, check it out on the description and use the coupon code for that all right so that was my short stream i wanted to talk to you a little bit about mm, neuroscience and art now we have done a couple of talks on neuroscience and art if you haven't seen them yet it's way behind i think it was probably the third or fourth stream that i did on my channel i had done it as a zoom private class and then i'd put it up as videos i would encourage all of you to go check it out uh, you know to see the full one but i wanted to uh, give you one aspect of it and neuroscience of art or neuroscience of art Mm. So I wanted to give you one aspect of it, and that is I wanted to talk about Pablo Picasso. Okay. So, how many of you have obviously everybody has heard of Pablo Picasso, but this is a website called mymodernmet.com, and uh, this is an incredible article that they have written on Picasso, and the way that his art has evolved. and i thought that this will be a good way to just talk about art in general now when i went to uh, spain i had gone to madrid and i had seen picasso's most famous painting called as the uh, guernica i don't know if you guys have seen it uh, guernica painting images and this one so this is a uh, guernica and i remember standing in front of this and just staring at it for a long time just trying to make sense of the whole thing and obviously i couldn't at that time there was just too much going on how do you make sense of a painting like this there is just uh, so much and i didn't understand it of course i read about it a lot i, I read that it was uh, you know he was trying to describe the horrors of war and he was trying to describe how we are all part of the same picture and there's there has been many interpretations of guernica but when you as a child when you are thinking about what is painting and what is art and you start drawing and you start uh, trying to paint what is in front of you and try to make it as natural as possible a painting like this does not make sense and when i heard about how picasso is one of the biggest greatest painters ever i wondered what is this about and uh, this article helped me a lot to just make a uh, no help me understand how art has evolved because picasso was born in 1881 and this painting was something that he made at the age of 13 uh, so this is called as uh, the altar boy and at the age of 13 he was able to make something like this so if you start off at that age being able to create artwork which is so realistic and later on he made a painting like this uh, i think this one is uh, this one is called portrait of the artist's mother and as he evolved he 
started to change his painting style. So he said that the world today doesn't make sense. So why should I paint pictures that do? And uh, you know, I said I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler at 13. Uh, you know, I still can't. And there's nothing, there's nothing to be, uh, you know, ashamed about. Uh, there are no straight lines when you're drawing a tiger anyway. So, I mean, these skills are, uh, I think, overrated. You don't need to do that. And then he started to create artwork that was more and more away from the real or the so-called real. And uh, then he entered into a phase where he started experimenting with color. So he entered into something called as the blue period where, uh, so this is something called as uh, the old guitarist and uh, all his paintings at this period was tinged with blue. And uh, this is called as the absinthe drinker. And uh, here you could see that there is blue mixed with green because uh, absinthe. You could have fake laugh like everyone else, all right. <laughs> Mother and child also tinge of blue. And then he entered into a rose period where everything you see is in shades of red and just experimenting with realism. And uh, hang on, the next page is where it gets really interesting. Then he entered into a phase called as the African period. So in Africa, you have these masks of uh, just faces and he started experimenting, putting those masks on human bodies. And you can see that there are some geometric signs coming in. So the faces have more straight lines, angles, right angles. And this is a this is actually a self-portrait, if I'm not wrong. Yes, 1907, Picasso self-portrait. So he made this, he made a portrait of himself. And uh, then he entered a phase called cubism. And this is where you divide reality, you break down reality into edges and shapes, just angles, straight lines, curves. And this is again, now look at this. This is also a girl with a mandolin and compare this with uh, the painting he made of a guitarist years ago, which was in blue. And now he's making a girl with, a man, uh, with an instrument and everything is in straight lines and curves. And this is the, cubism period and then he went into the synthetic phase where you break it down still further and everything is simplified Every, everything is polychromatic and uh, everything is abstract and then there is something called as neoclassism so you go all the way back to drawing real life paintings except that now things are not where they're supposed to be the hand can be too big or too small and you sort of start mixing in cubism, synthetic paintings with realism. And uh, you start making pictures like this, where they look natural, but they are not. Something is off. Reality is not real. And it's disturbing in a way. And finally, you reach surrealism where it's difficult to put anything into any bracket. You cannot really understand what this is. So this surreal quality is in terms of shapes, it's in terms of colors, it's in terms of the perspective you have. Everything becomes surreal. How do you interpret this? What is, there is no beginning, there's no end. And uh, this is sort of like the uh, final part of Picasso's work and then there is something called as the late work which is after surrealism until his death and it sort of continues in those lines it's a mixture of geometry plus surrealism plus synthetic painting and uh, this is now you can sort of see similarities with Guernica where if you look back on this now you can see at what period in his life he may have drawn this because this is clearly not a realist painting. This is clearly not in the rose period or the blue period. So this will be something at the surrealist Picasso, uh, surrealist uh, synthetic phase of his life. Now, I promised you neuroscience and art and uh, I'm going to give you neuroscience and art. I wanted to just try and explain to you how this could have happened. Now, let's draw the brain, okay? 
and let us think about how the brain interprets art or how the brain interprets reality when you see the world okay so suppose you are imagine you imagine seeing a tree so when you see a tree this tree the image of this will go and first hit the eyes and from the eyes it is going to go all the way back to the back of the brain called as the occipital lobe right and finally you realize that okay i'm looking at a tree but initially it's not a tree it is just photons of light it is just light bouncing off of the tree going to your eyes and millions of photons hitting your eyes and millions of signals traveling all the way back to your occipital lobe and millions of neurons getting stimulated okay there are millions of neurons getting stimulated because you saw one tree now every aspect of that tree so this branch this branch this branch this branch this leaf every aspect is one one photon getting into your brain now your brain has the job of putting things back into order so you have all these different dots that don't make any sense and at some point your brain has to finally realize that this is a tree and by brain i mean pfc because this is where your consciousness is so this is where you are aware that this is a tree so somewhere along the way from your occipital lobe to your prefrontal cortex your brain understands that what i'm looking at is a tree how does it do this now if i'm giving you a lot of dots the first thing you have to do is to start seeing patterns right everywhere you have to see patterns so a bunch of dots just meaninglessly put together you can't do anything with it but gradually you will start seeing lines and this is the first step in the occipital lobe and this is actually called as simple cells now the occipital lobe has multiple layers so you have v1 v2 v3 v up till v8 so there are multiple layers and the networks go from back to forward so the most posterior layers the backward layers the piche wala layers have simple cells and the job of the simple cells is is it a straight line is it a curve at what angle is the straight line is it a straight line like this is it a straight line like this is it a straight line like this is the straight line steady or is it a straight line that is moving and as the networks go forward more and more and more information get added so you have straight lines then you have curves then you have edges then you have movement and then you have color so by the time this information reaches say up till here you now have a basic idea that all these dots put together have something looking like this so you have this you have put together enough information to know that this is what it looks like what i'm seeing but we still don't know what it is then this information gets sent to different parts of the brain so we have reached till here so from the eye from the eyes we have gone till here and then we have reached till here and at here we know that it looks like a tree but we don't know it is a tree yet we know that this looks like this shape now this shape gets sent to two places one is the temporal lobe and one is the parietal lobe the temporal lobe has the job of 
checking this image and checking it against a dictionary of images and seeing that have I seen this image before and if so what's it called so here we compare this image to your dictionary and then you say that okay the word is tree it's called as a tree and tree means something so the idea of what it is what it is called and what its meaning is is called as lexicon and semantic so this all of this happens in the temporal lobe and in the parietal lobe the job is where so how far is the tree from me how close is it is is it a something that is moving or is it something that is steady so this is all happening in the parietal lobe and finally these two put these information together and decide that this is a tree and the tree is of this kind it is, is this far away and this is what the word tree means it will ask the limbic system that are you okay with this are you scared of the tree are you happy with the tree and finally it will give that information to the prefrontal cortex pfc and the prefrontal cortex finally realizes that i am looking at a tree this is what happens you know now oh wow haley shah is in the chat haley welcome welcome to a little discussion on uh, art we are we could also be talking about poetry here by the way because uh, pretty much exactly the same sequence happens when we write poetry but that is going to be a different discussion and probably one that we can have when i call you on for a podcast so yeah that is going to happen back to this finally when your brain is realizing that this is what i'm looking at that is when you realize it so when i say pfc i mean you because you are not your temporal lobe your occipital lobe your parietal lobe none of that is you when you look at a tree and you realize that this is a tree your prefrontal cortex has to realize it now why is all of this important think about what picasso had done and think about it in terms of the brain map and let me number it for you let's see you go from 1 2 3 4 5 okay so pretty much exactly how the image of the tree goes through your brain from the eyes all the way back here 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 and then back what picasso did was go back in evolution okay so your prefrontal cortex is step one that is what you realize it so that's why you paint what you see so you paint what you see you see a tree you paint a tree that is your prefrontal cortex you are basically painting from your prefrontal cortex yeah right behind that is your parietal and your temporal here if you can manage to change things you can edit your brain you can basically edit reality at all these different levels and editing reality is art okay if you ever wanted an if you ever wanted a definition of art art is a way of editing reality voluntarily if you can have control over the way that your brain perceives reality that is art if you don't have control that is a defense mechanism right that's the difference if you are able to control the way you perceive reality then you are an artist uh haley shah still waiting to hear from you about that podcast oh damn all right haley uh, right after the stream i'm going to call you and we're going to set up a date all right so art is editing reality and how much can you edit reality that decides how competent of an artist are you so if you can edit reality at the pfc level so i'm looking at a tree i can take the tree into my mind and draw it i'm just copying things from my pfc can you edit it at the parietal level or can you edit it at the temporal level 
Now, parietal level means your parietal cortex is talking about distance. And the parietal cortex is talking about size. The parietal cortex is talking about movement. So can you make the tree much smaller? Can you make the tree much larger than it is? Can you make the tree really close to you or really far away from you? Can you make the tree as if it is moving in, the, in a blur? Or can you edit the temporal part of it? That is, can you edit the meaning of it? Can you make the tree uh, contextually different? So suppose a normal tree is supposed to be on the ground, but can you make a tree say on top of a car? Now this is contextually different and this could be art. So if you can create something that is out of its regular context, you have created art basically. You just need to know how to uh, A, justify it to yourself and B, you need to find somebody to buy it. That's it. You know who has screenshotted it. Oh, all right. This is, uh, I think this is the risk that I run while doing this. It's, there's nothing I can do. That's fine. So artist editing reality, edit it at the PFC level. That's what we all do. Edit it at the parietal level or the temporal level. Great. What Picasso did was to go still further back. And if you remember, I said how uh, every layer as you go forward has different things. So one of the final layers is color. And I feel that what Picasso did is he started experimenting with color first. So he went through the blue phase, he went through the rose phase. It's like if you see reality and you can see that, okay, so this is white in color, this is black in color. Can you ask yourself, but why? Why should it be white? Why should it be black? Why can't I make everything green? Why can't I make everything purple? And you edit reality's color and you are an artist. You go backwards still and you can you edit movement? You go backwards still, can you edit edges? Now, if I have to draw a man and, oh my God, I should not draw you know what I mean. If I have to draw anyone, what my mind is doing is I'm seeing edges. I'm seeing the edges of a hand. I'm seeing edges of a face. What if I can stop my brain from perceiving smooth edges and instead break it down to create more rough edges? What if I stop seeing curves in the same way and edit those curves? What if I can edit the straight lines themselves? Finally, what if I can edit the very photons that I can see? At what point can I stop editing? How far back can I go, right? So if I had to say, um, if I had to say, if I had to draw a face, okay? Now, if I had to draw a face, this is something which is in instinctive. Like you just draw eyes, you just draw uh, a nose. Now, each one of these points technically can be made, can be edited out. Now, in ev at every point in the brain, now you know what's at what point are we seeing? Now I drew this face from my prefrontal cortex because I know that this is what a face should look like. But um, another one, another masterpiece. Guys, I'm trying to teach here, okay? I'm trying to uh, help you guys understand neuroscience of art, for God's sake. But uh, yeah, thanks for the support, guys. Thanks for the support. I really, uh, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, what was I saying? Right, so now let's... <laughs> bit starts from 5 lakhs. Oh, God damn it. Now let's look at uh, Picasso's paintings again and see what he had done. Let's see. Kagya, first page. Mm, page number one. So you start off with realism. You start off with prefrontal cortex. You start off with whatever you see. 
then you keep drawing and then you start editing it a little bit you start uh, you know blurring the blurring the ends of the paintings you realize that you don't have to make everything very very crystal clear and then you start editing colors you start uh, editing then you start editing shapes and finally you start becoming more geometric you start editing edges uh, you start seeing everything in cubes and uh, then neoclassicism reality itself gets edited whatever you are seeing is not what you are seeing you can just change the whole thing and uh, finally reality can be anything that you want it to be and then you have something like guernica which is absolutely from the artist's brain he saw something took the concepts out of it rearranged reality in the way that he wanted and he was able to paint it out so i feel like this is a Picasso is a great way of understanding neuroscience and art at the same time and I would encourage you guys to go and use this knowledge to try and appreciate artists uh, in this way because I feel like it helps me to just see it differently and there has to be some advantage for you for following my channel and learning about neuroscience go you know uh, show off to your friends and just talk about Picasso and uh, Tell them, you know, how you've understood Picasso in a way that nobody has taught you before and go spread the word of the channel. That would really help. I wanted to, uh, I want you all to, of course, subscribe to the channel, which is obvious. I want you all to uh, share the, you know, share the link of the channel, share this link of this description, uh, this video with whoever you think, uh, you know, would enjoy something like this. Oh, Siddharth is in the chat. Welcome, Siddharth. Hey man, this works for design as well, you know, the way that neuroscience understands design, that would also be uh, good. Check Discord Artist Corner. All right, wait one second. Did somebody put something new? Oh God, did you put up the screenshots? Did you put up the screen? Yeah, you put up the screenshots. Oh God. All right. You put up the screenshots. That's fine. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> Uh, so like the video guys make sure that you're liking the video make sure that you've subscribed and uh, I have some information I have some news for you this weekend Friday Saturday Sunday I am doing a I'm doing a workshop okay so I'm doing a workshop for uh, neuro hacking we are going to talk about productivity we are going to talk about um, we're going to talk about attention building and we're going to talk about uh, conflict resolution there's going to be a three-day workshop it is going to be uh, for 1000 rupees for three days. It's going to be three two hour sessions. I'm going to hold on. I'm just going to share the link. If you guys want to sign up for it, uh, please do so. It would be really great to see you all there. Uh, one second. I'm just going to share it on the chat. All right. So yeah so friday saturday sunday 5 to 7 pm if you guys are up for it uh sign up and i shall uh, see you all there so basically for the workshop i'll just give you a brief idea of what i'm going to do we're going to have some training modules we're going to have group exercises we're going to have question answer sessions and we're going to have discussions on neuroscience on uh, attention building focus uh, dealing with procrastination conflict resolution and uh, building a sense of purpose something that I've been working on for a while, just looking back at how to multitask and stuff like that and how I have been doing things. So I hope to see you all there. And that's it. This was an amazing conversation. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, my friends on Discord, I hope that you had fun as well. Uh, it was it was really nice chatting with all of you. Yeah, yeah. Good. All right. Andy, thank you so much, man. Uh, I think that the Artist Corner really owes you a lot. You've really made a big difference. And thank you again for the meditation uh, meditation sequences that you, you've been doing. I'm, yeah, so uh, everyone on YouTube, if you are looking for a reason to get up in the morning and, uh, you know, start meditating, we have a we have a meditation corner in, on our Discord channel. And every morning at 8 a.m., uh, Andy does a meditation uh you know session and at, nine o'clock and nine o'clock at night. and nine p.m at night except on the days yeah. when i'm streaming in which case uh, sometimes yeah. i disturb them 
but uh, yeah, other, okay. <laughs> otherwise I, I i encourage everyone to do that and uh, thank you all i shall see you soon this wednesday is trifecta of reality so i know a lot of you guys have been asking me so that is going to be on prakash channel this time we are going to take turns so every week we're going to you know rotate it so this wednesday it's on prakash channel so do join there and i shall see you all on friday if you sign up for the workshop chalo bye guys good night good night everyone oh, good see. night good night